Hi guys, I'm the British Shepherd of Two Man, and today I got um, kind of like a semi unboxing video because my mum who these arrived when these arrived, opened them just to see what they were. So, anyway, um, so first off, here I have Before the Fall. That is one of my favourite films, really good film. Um, yeah, it's really weird because the the front cover is just nothing whatsoever to do with the actual film. So weird. Um, I mean, you have a look at the back cover and it tells you all about the film. Very good film, awesome film. I recommend you watch it if you haven't watched it. Um, very good film. Apart from the ending, it does suck so badly. I hate it. Um, anyway, so the second thing here. This is a rather big bag. Let's try and set the camera up. Forgive me for the awkwardness. Oh, my bad. So, here is the sweet shirt. Uh, we sent the old, the first one back that we got from Military Mart because, um, it didn't fit, it was far too small. So we, we sent it back and asked for a new one. So they sent a new one. Second thing they have here is Swedish M39 trousers. These ones should fit. And so, yeah, they should be really awesome. Uh, so if you take a look here, sorry about the speaking, that's my grandma and my dad. Um, so here is. Uh, the label which is really awesome um, that it's still got the label in I think that they managed to get a whole load that were unissued so yep yeah, that's basically that so yeah. sorry about that that was really annoying this family being noisy anyway so yeah those. They were just something old so yeah the inside here is something I've been so looking forward to opening just going to check it doesn't have any personal information on uh, so yeah these are really awesome because I got a really good deal on these as well so let's have a look at what they are Shapes. And what these are is these are Diac pistols. This is the Browning. I think this is an FN one. Or it could be a Chinese copy of one. Um, doesn't work partially because it's missing the spring, which in the recall world, which should be on the top here. Um, but the price I paid for it was like something like. Uh, 60 something pounds which is really good I think a uh, bit of a shame about that oh also it's you know I'm gonna have to see if I can find parts for that or make parts for that it's really awesome non original FN grips and they've been replaced by someone very well done though the extractors in place the act certificate here um, so yep yeah, there's that that one I'd probably just use for like a pallet fill or as a project. Next thing I have is one of these, which is a Chinese copy of a Browning FN1900. So this one dry fires, which is double awesome. So this is kind of just to set in for until I got the other one fixed. Now it's very difficult to get the mag out of this one. Uh, but this one has a magazine, the other one doesn't. Uh, this one's got a safety. I wonder if it works. Ooh, it works as well. It's really awesome. So, that's not three over. So 
She is very, very awesome. Um, See, so yeah, there's a Chinese copy. Very strange there isn't any things like Revit, 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 Revit written on it. But, so what? So, I'll try and get the magazine out. Go. This looks like it's probably like a five round magazine by the looks of it. Um, no markings on it that I can see. No markings on the bottom. This looks like it could be one of these special ones which was shame for like the 7.65 Mauser ammunition. So, anyway, yeah, there's that one. Um, looks like they might have attempted to make a hold open piece here. So anyway, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Um, so I'd say this could be produced around about 1930s, maybe. Uh, or 1920s, maybe, because um, it was quite fashionable for to have FN-made or look 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 alike guns in China around that time. So yep, lovely. These, these are probably re remade uh, grips because I mean one's lovely smooth material, the other's like this horrible wood stuff. Same kind of stuff that was in this one as well. This one also has a DX certificate, obviously. Wouldn't be dumb enough not to buy a DX without a DX certificate. So yeah, this is the one that I was really looking forward to. Teeny bit of a letdown, but so what? I'm planning on restoring it. Should be awesome, like an awesome challenge. Because I quite like challenges. Um, so yeah, it's it does actually have the stamping here, just incredibly worn. If you take a look. You can see there's like uh, the FN, the thing that all Browning 1900s had. I'll try and focus. Uh, so, sorry about that. There's a circle that would be there. I don't know if you can see it. That would be a circle that would say FN and it would have a picture of one of these. And then it, it, it can see just about underneath there, would, there was some writing there, but it's all just worn off. And it says on the top here, like all proper ones should have Fabrique Nationale de Herschel, uh, de Gaulle Herschel rather, Belgique, uh, which is what all of them should have. Um, so yeah, here is the, uh, the proof marks, more proof marks. And it has a U, which I think means it could be one of the earlier types. And then is there's something else, but it's obstructed by this uh, grip that was made so uh, I'm probably going to take the grip off and uh, take the whole thing to bits uh, and try and get it working again hopefully Hope well not working as in fire fire but working as in like possibly getting the slider to go back and forth without being you being able to do this You should not be able to do this. So, yeah, that basically just needs the spring and like a, a rod for that, which goes on the top. Um, they're very reasonably expensive to get uh, normally, but uh, oh, I just realized something really interesting. There's different serial numbers for different parts here. Because if you take a look here. It's hard to show you. That says 595086. And then it says here 593085. And then it says 588440. It's very interesting that they've kind of like got a whole load of bits cobbled together. And now, so with this one. <coughs> Yeah, sorry. Um, 
so yep, it's just got a seal number stamping. Blooming camera, it's rubbish. So yep, there just got the seal number there. Got some what looks like some hashed over markings there maybe. So yeah, this could have either been made in like a gun shop or um a a proper arms manufacturing place. It's got all the DX stamps. Um so yeah, the thing is though it doesn't even have now. It might have originally had this, but it doesn't have a safety markings on, on the thing. On the safety. Which is a bit weird as well. Um anyway, doesn't matter. This is just gonna probably be a pouch filler or something. No, that that's not gonna be a pouch filler. That is gonna be the pouch filler until I've managed to fix it. That one there is gonna be the one that I'd actually use in a reenactment, say if I was being a German officer or something, because I believe they were produced from nineteen well, these ones were. These were produced from nineteen eighteen ninety nine to nineteen eleven. And that's when production ceased. And um, these ones were produced, I think, from 1919 roughly until about 1945. And I believe that the Germans captured a whole load of these um, when after they took Belgium. Um, so, yeah, very, very interesting. So, and what happened was they were fair amount of them were captured. It's very awesome that it still has one of its original screws here but the other one's fake. Well, not fake, but like not original. If not, I mean. So, yeah. Um, I don't know if this is going to work, so I'm not trying it out because I've literally just seen these. But I wonder if they're going to fit into my I'll try that 1900 first. It's perfectly. Let's try the other one. It should also fit perfectly, hopefully. Also fits perfectly, but maybe a bit loose on both of them, but so what? So I paid 200 for both of these. So. I think it was a pretty deal, good deal. This was, I think, 138. And this one was something like 62. I can't remember. Um, anyway, so yeah, I'll try and get. I'm going to take this to bits. Take a look at it. See if I can fix it up. Because I mean, yeah, only 725,000. I think of these were made. So I think it, that makes it really rare. Because you get all these people on gun forms say, say, saying, oh no, they're really common. But I mean, there was only about 600,000 SDG 44s made. And they're re really, really rare, so I can't really see why this isn't really rare. Yeah, and I've not seen one of these going for under 225. So it's really good to get one for like 85, well, not 85, 62. So anyway, yep, I'm going to go check them out now and goodbye. Comment, subscribe, bye.